whether it's uh, your healing, whatever it is, give attention to the Word of God. Pay attention to it and receive it and take it knowing it's God talking to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. It has to become a vital part of your thinking, a vital talk part yeah. of your yeah. uh, of your daily speech. Amen. So, in other words, my son, put my word first place in your life, or final authority. Now, it looks like this, but you said this. Verse twenty-one goes as far to say. Let them not depart from your eyes. That's pretty much all the time. That's all the time, yeah. yeah. And, and keep them in the midst of your heart. Yeah, that's so how you keep I, it. I wanted you to see this. They <clears throat> are life mm -hmm. the word. unto those that find them or unto those that seek them and look at them and believe them and meditate on them and, and say them, them and put it first place in your life and health the cross reference says medicine to all their flesh now then um, <clears throat> has the word changed no Jesus Christ the word of God is the same yesterday today, today and and forever. Yes. This book is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. His word, not to become healing to your flesh, would have to lose its power. Yes, but Brother Copeland, um, now you see, that was a different dispensation. No, it wasn't. Dispensations don't have anything to do with this. With, right. This has to do with the Word of God. It hasn't to do with a... Now, there, uh, there are dispensations. Don't misunderstand me. But healing is in every dispensation. And God's Word doesn't change No. in any dispensation. No, neither does Jesus. That's right. He, he's the healer yesterday, He's the healer today, and He'll be the healer tomorrow. That's right. Now then, let's talk about is it God's will? Did now, we talk I, about verse 23? That's so important. About keep your heart, because that's, you, that's where it is. Protected. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it, out of your heart are the issues of life. How do you keep your heart? Attend to the Word of God. Keep that Word going in keep your eyes, in, there, in your the, ears. Feed on it. in your heart. Uh, was it Matthew 4, 4, when Jesus said, Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every, every word, word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Father? What are the issues of life? Look that word up. It's talking about forces, spiritual forces. Amen. Faith is a spiritual force. That's right. Wisdom is a spiritual force. Understanding. Yeah. And you're going to get that by attending to the Word to the of Word. God and taking it and doing it. Yeah, amen. 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 I, I got this out of Keith Moore's book, God's Will. That is so powerful. To heal. I heard you give that the other day. It's oh, so I'm telling you. And that's all. Oh, listen. Thank you, Keith. You talk about a powerful book. It, it is just Oh, man, I, you get healed just reading that book. Yeah. Now, this is what Brother Keith said. Now, let, let, me, talk, let me tell you something about Keith Moore, those of you that are not acquainted with his, with his ministry. He spent 17 years at Brother Hagin's side in healing school at Ramah. And Keith taught it. Day in, day out, he taught and watched people get receive miracles. Mm -hmm. Oh, my, my, my. Um, he wrote the song, The Glory's Here, The Glory's Here. Reach up and take it, it's mine, I take it now. Yeah. And he wrote that from a miracle that happened in healing school. There was a woman on her way uh, to the to Mayo Clinic. She had been operated on, 
and somehow or another uh, they 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 slipped and slit her esophagus mm -hmm. and she had been I, I believe it seemed to me like uh, 11 corrective surgeries had been done and she's on her way to males to and she hadn't eaten any solid food in months this had a feeding tube up her nose mm -hmm. well when she came in there they didn't they didn't know what the well she just had this tube up her nose and Brother Hagin is just teaching on Mark 11, 23 and 24 and 25. Believe you receive when you pray. It's that simple. Just believe that you receive it. And uh, so uh, she just she just went like this. She took it. That's all she did. She, I take it. And Keith wrote that song. The glory is here. I take it now. And uh, and Brother Hagin's talking about the glory and so forth. She just reached up and did this and pulled that tube out. Praise God. Well, <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, oh, Lord Jesus. She came back and gave her testimony. Oh, my. <laughs> she went across the street. She hasn't eaten anything but liquids in months. Months, uh, not months. Months would be a bad enough. Months, a uh, bunch of months. <laughs> I don't remember how long. It, several months. She hadn't had anything but liquid. She went across the street to a Mexican restaurant. I think it's a, uh, anyway, I don't remember the name of it. Monterey House. Went right straight across the street, ate two Mexican dinners. Came in there, and Brother Hagin said, "Boy, she must have been healed." And lived to tell and about. was just healed and well, and just just thrilled to come back over there, you know, praising God after eating two Mexican dinners. <laughs> Hallelujah! But that's how simple it is. She just believed what Brother Hagin was teaching. Acted on it. She just reached out and said, "I take it now. It's yeah. mine. I take it now." But that's now she did. she did that after hearing the word. Now, that's the environment that's in right. which Keith Moore ministered 17 years. You'd think a man would know something about healing, wouldn't you? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Now, Keith said, how do we know whether it's God's will to heal us or not? It makes little difference what others say about it. What did he say about it? Right. Remember that God is no respecter of persons. And he never changes. So what he said to them yesterday, he is saying to you today. God's word is God speaking to me. These statements are taken directly from the Bible with little or no variation. The verbs and construction have been changed to apply to you personally and to sum up the thoughts in some instances. Also, many of these statements are prefaced by phrases like, if you walk in my commandments, if you believe, obey, and so forth. What did God say? A hundred and one things God said. God said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Exodus 15, 26. Your days shall be a uh, 120 years. Genesis 6, 3. You shall be buried in a good old age, Genesis 15, 15. You shall come to your grave in a full age, as like as a shock of corn cometh in his season, Job 5, 26. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you, Exodus 12, 13. I'll take sickness from the midst of you, and the number of your days I will fulfill, Exodus 23, 25, and 26. I, I, I quote that scripture almost every day. Now, the others that I said earlier, I, I quote every day. But standing there in front of the mirror, oh, he's taking sickness from the midst That's of me, right. and the length of my days he'll fulfill. Praise what God. are That's the scripture. lengths of my days? 120 years. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I will not put any of the diseases you're afraid of on you, but I'll take all sickness away from you. Deuteronomy 7, 15. 
It'll be well with you, and your days shall be multiplied and prolonged as the days of heaven on the earth. Deuteronomy 11, 9 and, and through 21. I turned the curse into a blessing unto you because I love you. Deuteronomy 23, 5 and Nehemiah 13, 2. You know, Ken, that's a great scripture on prolong. The number of your days I will prolong. That means add to it. That yeah. means yeah. Longer, longer, longer. It means it's it, 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 it's not anti, it's pro. It's pro for long life. Mm -hmm. God, 120 years is the only lifespan that God put, that God said and put in the Word. That 70 or 80 was a curse that came on the Israelites in the wilderness yeah. because of disobedience. And they said, we're going to die in the desert. They kept saying it. Well, what is God going to do? It, I mean, they kept saying it. They didn't say what he said. They kept saying what they said. And their spiritual laws involved there. It had to come to pass. That's right. Wow. That's right. That's good. I have redeemed you from every sickness and every plague. Glory Deuteronomy to 28, God. 28, 61 and Galatians 3, 13. As your days, so shall your strength be. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 33, 25. I have found a ransom for you. Your flesh shall be fresher than a child's, and you shall return to the days of your youth. Job 33, 24 and 25. I have healed you and brought up your soul from the grave. I've kept you alive from going down into the pit. Mm. Psalm 31 and 2. I'll give you strength and bless you with peace. Whoa, I'll give you strength and bless you with peace, Psalm 29, 11. I'll preserve you and keep you alive, Psalm 41, 2. What scriptures? Hallelujah. I will strengthen you upon the bed of languishing. I will turn all your bed in your sickness, Psalm 41, 3. I am the health of your countenance and your God, Psalm 43, 5. No plague shall come nigh your dwelling, Psalm 91, 10. Whoa, that's good. And no yeah. plague. No plague. And, and no I, plague that will come word languishing, here. that means you're you're down under. I mean, yeah. you, you've gotten weak. You, it's, it's had an effect on you already. I, well, way, way I understand it in the, in the Hebrew, it's it's lang, it's long term sickness, yeah. Yeah. languishing in yeah. sickness and disease. So don't. Quit believing God. I will satisfy you with long life, Psalm 91, 16. I heal all your diseases, Psalm 103, 3. I sent my word and heals you and delivered you from your destruction, Psalm Hallelujah. 107, 20. You shall not die but live and declare my works, Psalm 118, 7. I heal your broken heart and bind up your wounds, Psalm 147, 3. The years of your life shall be many, Proverbs 4.10, <clears throat> trusting me brings health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Strong hey, that bones. stops osteoporosis That's right, right there. That That's stops right. it right there. L listen to that. Trusting me brings health to your navel and marrow to your bones. That gets rid of leukemia. I think navel stands for your inward part. Oh, yeah, it's it's it's. It, it's all of your vital organs. Yeah. <clears throat> and, Praise God. Uh, where was I now? My words are life to you and health and medicine to all your flesh. Proverbs 4.22. My good report makes your bones fat. Proverbs 15.30. My pleasant words are sweet to your soul and health to your bones. Boy, there's a bunch of bone scriptures right there. You have anything wrong with your bones? Grab it, darling. Take it. Say, that's mine. I take it now. God save me. God is talking to you. His word is speaking to you. My pleasant words are sweet to your soul and health to your bones. Proverbs 16, 24. My joy is your strength. A merry heart does good like a medicine. Ha, 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 ha. Glory to God. Just start laughing right now. No, so I think you could say... A sad heart, a sad countenance. Uh, you know, it's sorrow, just the depression. It's just the opposite. Sorrow and depression. But then you, he bore our sorrows and griefs. So there's no use in being that way. No, that's right. The eyes of the blind shall be open. 
The eyes of them that see shall not be dim, Isaiah 32, 3 and 35, 5. Amen. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped, and the ears of them that hear shall hearken, Isaiah 32, 3 and Praise 35, 5. Jesus. The tongue of the dumb shall sing, the tongue of the stammerer shall be ready to speak plainly, Isaiah 35, 6 and 32, 4. The lame man shall leap as a heart or a deer, Isaiah 35, 6. I will recover you and make you to live. I'm ready to save you, Isaiah 38, 16 oh, and 20. I give power to the faint. I increase strength to them that have no might, Isaiah 40, 29. I will renew your strength. I will strengthen and help you, Isaiah 40, 31, 41, 10. To your old age and gray hairs, I'll carry you, and I will deliver you, Isaiah 46, 4. I bore your sicknesses, Isaiah 53, 4. I carried your pains, Isaiah 53, 4. I was put to sickness for you, Isaiah 53, 10. With my stripes, you are healed, Isaiah 53, 5. I will heal you, Isaiah 57, 19. You know, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Amen. Well, so far, that's 42. Forty-two witnesses. <laughs> your light shall break forth as the morning, and your health shall spring forth speedily. Isaiah 58, 8. I will restore health unto you, and I'll heal you of your wounds, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 30, 17. Behold, I'll bring the city health and cure, and I'll cure you and reveal unto you the abundance of peace and truth. I'll bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. Ezekiel 34, 16. Behold, I'll cause breath to enter into you and you will live, and I'll put my spirit in you and you will live. Ezekiel 37, 5 and 14. Whithersoever the river shall come shall live, and they'll be healed, and everything shall live where the river comes. Praise Ezekiel God. 47, 9. Seek me and you shall live. Amos 5, 4 and 6. I have arisen with healing in my wings, Malachi 4, 2. Praise God. Praise and God. And we just now got to the New Testament. Did, was the scripture in there about uh, rivers of living water? When it, That's New Testament. New Testament. Those were all Old Testament. I, I, I can have Testament. the New Testament. <laughs> Amen. I can have and, both. Well, let, me, let me get what I can in here in this last minute. I will, be, this New Testament, I will be thou clean, Matthew 8, 3. I took your infirmities, Matthew 8, 17. I bore your sicknesses, Matthew 8, 17. If you're sick, you need a physician. I am the Lord, your physician. Yes, amen. Matthew 9, 12, and Exodus 15, 26. I moved with compassion toward the sick, and I healed them, Matthew 14, 14. I heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease, Matthew 4, 23. According to your faith, be it done unto you, Matthew 9, 29. I give you power and authority over all unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease, Matthew 10, 1 and Luke 9. I heal them all, Matthew 12, 15 and Hebrew 13, 8. As many as touch me are made perfectly whole, Matthew 14, 36. Healing is the children's bread, Matthew 15, 26. Glory to God, hallelujah, and Jesus is Lord. Yes, you did it, you did it. Hallelujah. Not long after Kenneth and Gloria Copeland were married, they were given four acres of land in southwest Arkansas from Gloria's grandparents. As they visited their new property throughout the years, they would bring camping gear and use it as their own camping ground. The Lord began to grow their vision for one day having a house on the property. Across the highway was an abandoned house that was over a hundred years old and had belonged to a family Gloria had known as a child. It now seemed to be falling apart, but Gloria saw that it had potential. The question was, could it be moved and remain in one piece? After being turned down by one moving company, Brother Copeland found a man named Mr. Wooten to do the job. He said, everything will be all right, and it was. They successfully moved the house to the perfect spot on the property, and as Brother Copeland says, that's when the real work began. Extensive renovations were done, designed by Gloria and her mother Mary. Soon the vision the Lord gave them for the property was a reality. It's just been a marvelous place, and then as we began to grow in the ministry and, and our ministry began to develop. 
we would come up here and spend time in prayer and seek the Lord and get direction and and, uh, and it, it it became a a, a, a place of, of fellowship with him and fellowship with our family a life of total health is available to you do you know how to access it with the healing promises book by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland you can discover how to tap into God's healing power to overcome any sickness or disease Kenneth and Gloria have compiled scripture after scripture of God's healing promises to you each one shown in four different translations the King James Version, Amplified Bible Classic Edition, James Moffat Translation, and the New English Bible. Use it like a medicine cabinet and take your scripture daily. Healing is a promise to people of all ages. It's God's will for you to be healed right now. Make it your personal project to be well. Handwrite the verses out. Get them in your heart and speak them over yourself. Take God at his word. See yourself through the eyes of faith, healed and whole and strong. Healing Promises, a hands-on healing resource manual to help you live in divine health through the power of God's Word. Discover how to tap into God's healing power. Request your free copy of Healing Promises from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. This hands-on healing manual gives practical application of God's Word for healing. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. If you're outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Glory to God, we're going to send you that Healing Promises book, four different translations. That whole book is just nothing but healing promises and healing facts. Now, this is important. Let me, let me tell you this. There are healing promises and healing facts. By his stripes ye were healed is not a promise. That's no, a fact. That's right. Amen? Yeah. Praise That's God. That's a done deal. Each scripture, like I said, is four different translations. King James, Amplified, James Moffat, and the New English Bible. Praise God. If you've got, all, you got a, a lot of them in your phone, you can go back and check them out and read them. But get them in your eyes, ears, and mouth. I mean, get them in and get them in your spirit. What we read? It's healing and medicine to your flesh. Glory to God. Yes, amen. It has to be appropriated by faith. Now then, go to kcm.org. That's all you got to do, and it's free, praise God, and we'll pay the postage on it, praise God. You can also download Keith Moore's book on his website. You got to get your hands on that book. I'm telling you. It's free, too. Woo! Like Brother Keith says, no expense, no excuse. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Go to uh, faithtrainers.com. Father, we receive healing today. This is healing school on the air. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. God. We receive it. We pray for every person in the sound of our voices. And we bless you, sir. And we thank you for being our healer. You've never turned anybody Thank down. You, Lord. you never said, no, I'm not going to do it today. You've got to do it today. Not one time did Jesus ever say that, and I thank you for it, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Download the free broadcast study notes. Amen. KCM.org slash notes. Use them to teach. Teach the very same scriptures. All of this will be on the notes, praise God. I'm so glad you could join us today. So you need to be with us tomorrow because we're going to be doing the same thing tomorrow. So until then, this is Kenneth and Gloria reminding you again that Jesus is Lord. Visit our website, kcm.org, to watch the broadcast or download the study notes free. You can also request a free copy of the broadcast on DVD, CD, or digital download. Shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Keep your faith strong in the Word and expect to see the manifestations of the Holy Ghost and fire. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher.
Seattle's new home for news and talk, 660 WXQW. Hello, friend. I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II, and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent, so to speak, but we're interdependent, and that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you. And I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter. And in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers. But most of the time, we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place, call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God has told you it could be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministry. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons and we needed to be we have a place that we can convene around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron, so there's the that the countenance of one friend to another. I may have paraphrased that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. Hi, welcome to another episode of Answers. This is Dr. Keith Clark. I want to continue my series on how not to waste money. Stay tuned. We've got answers. Hi, welcome to another episode of Answers. I'm Dr. Clark, and I want to get back to the subject matter. But before we do that, I want to just take time to thank all of you all who have reached out to me by way of Facebook, those of you all who have let me know, inboxing me, letting me know that, listen, you have been blessed by this show's answer, especially the one we did the last episode about finances. I want to continue that tonight, but I just wanted to take this time to tell you thank you so, so very much. You did not have to let me know that that message did that much uh, positive impact to your life, and I want you to know I appreciate it. How not to waste money, that's what we're dealing with. How not to waste money. I believe, without hesitation or reservation, that it is God's desire that his people would manage their resources properly and as a result of that, have the financial security that they need to do all that he has called them to do. I believe that it's not God's desire for his people to be without. Now, I've got scripture to support that. One that comes to mind that I'm sure you're aware of. Psalms 23 that says, the Lord is my shepherd. Watch this. I shall not want. That means if God is my shepherd, I'm his sheep. There is nothing that I need I should be going without. Why is that oftentimes the case then, Dr. Clark? It is oftentimes the case because many who have been blessed with resources mismanage them. 
It is never God's desire for us to be without. Now, I know somebody is going to say, well, the Bible says the poor you would have with you always. It does say that. And that's a true principle. But the reality is he never said who the poor would be. So I suggest to you that you manage your resources properly. So those who are poor can benefit from your managing resources, which allows them to not go without because you have been put in a position to be a blessing to them. But you can't be a blessing to the poor, whoever they may be. And he never said who that would be. But you can be a blessing to the poor so that even in the poor state, their needs can still be met because the one, yourself, me, who has the resources are managing them properly. And if we're going to manage resources properly, then that means we cannot waste money. Last episode, we talked about the first practice to avoid. Now, whenever you're studying the scriptures, there are practices that you need to mimic. And then there are pra practices that you need to avoid. And one of the practices that you need to avoid, we talked about immaturity. But tonight, I want to deal with the practice that needs to be avoided impatience impatience whenever you are impatient you will waste money whenever you are impatient you will waste money the Bible says in Luke chapter 15 that episode with the prodigal son as Jesus tells that parable he lets us know that as soon as the younger son gets his resources when he gets his loot, the Bible says he goes into a far country. Not many days after, immediately, he gets the money and he gets the moving. That is a sign of him being impatient. And there are many of you all who are watching me now. You must admit that in your life, you've wasted money because of your impatience I know I have there's a whole lot of things that had I just waited I would still have wealth I would still have money if I had just waited impatient he gets his money and he gets to moving now let me share with you briefly the two things that causes us to be impatient when it comes down to finances the two things, the two reasons why, in most cases, if not all, we are impatient when it comes down to finances. And remember, impatience leads to waste. Immaturity will breed impatience, and impatience, like immaturity, will lead to waste. Watch this, impatient. The first reason why this young man was impatient, and it was obvious when you read the parable in its entirety, he was impatient, watch this, because... He wanted what was eventually going to come to him. He wanted it now. Let me say it this way. What he would get later, he wanted now. The Bible says, thank you, Holy Spirit. He asked the father for his inheritance. Truth of the matter is, the inheritance belonged to him. It was his and he would have gotten it at the father's death when the father died, transition. Then the younger son would have gotten his inheritance. But he could not wait till the father was dead. He wanted it now. You are being impatient with money. When what you know you can get later, you demand that you have it now. Wow. When what you know is coming to you later, you demand to have it now. And many times in life, many times in life, we waste money because we can't wait till later. We have got to have it now. My brother, my sister, this prodigal son waste money his resources, embarrasses the family, causes shame 
to come upon himself and his father's house because he was impatient. He could not wait till later. He had to have it now. And whenever you feel as though you have to have it now and you can't wait till later, you are bound to waste money. Because impatience means you are being emotional. Impatience means you are buying off of impulse. People make millions of dollars every day on getting people to buy off of impulse. Getting people to buy without thinking. Getting people to buy right there on the spot. Go to a car lot. And the car dealer is, is, is almost uh, demanding respectfully that you get into the car and sit down. Why? Because he wants you to smell the new car smell. He wants you to feel the leather and he wants you to feel and look at all of those fancy lights and all of the mechanism on the dashboard. Because he's trying to get you to buy now. Doesn't want you to leave out doing. You can, the, the list can go on and on of places, businesses, marketing strategies that appeal to our impatience. This boy wastes his money because he's impatient. It's going to come to him later. But he wants to have it now. Who is listening to me? Where are you in your life financially? And there's something you're ready to do right now as I speak. And the truth of the matter is God has navigated the circumstances of your life and mine that we can make this connect at this time. And what you have to agree with as I'm speaking, that what you're about to do is nothing short of you being impatient with finances. How many married couples who wanted to get married and deserve to be married, but because they couldn't wait to get enough money set aside for them to live and the wedding, they chose to spend all the money on the wedding and then now they're worried about how they're going to live. Impatient. Buying the new car, buying a new outfit, buying a new toy. Brothers, we do that like we buy toys, you know, uh, electric hammers and all that kind of stuff that we use for about a week and then we don't even want it anymore. Impatience will always lead to it. We can get it later, but we've got to have it now. One financial analyst told me something as I got serious about my finances. He said to me, he said, uh, Dr. Clark, if you really, 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 really want to buy something, and I mean it's just an overwhelming feeling that you've got to have it, give it 30 days. And at the end of 30 days, see if you feel about that item the same way. And if you do, then, you know, perhaps decide then if you should buy it. And I've done it, and I promise you, it has saved me more money than I can imagine. Just realizing that I don't have to have it right now. Impatient. When you know you can have it later, but you are demanding that you have to have it now. Now, I think I need to say this to you. Because the enemy will try to make you think that you'll never get it later. So he'll deceive you into demanding it now because you won't think you can get it later. You don't know. You may not be alive. Come on with all of that. If you don't, if you, if you don't think you're going to be alive later, then why get it now? That's sure enough waste. Impatient. I can get it later, but I want it now. And you know I'm redundant, not because I think you're slow, but I want this thing to stick. Dr. Willie J. Newman, who taught us New Testament, said that constant review is the student's glue. In patience, <laughs> you can have it later, but you want it now. Here's the second thing. You're being impatient, watch this, when no sounds like not, or I'm sorry, when no sounds like never. 
when no sounds like never. How many times we bought things? How many times have we wasted money because we really were consumed that if it does not happen now, it won't ever happen. If it won't happen right now, then it won't ever happen. And we get caught up in this rat race of competition, watch this, with unnecessary items and things that bring no value to our lives. Running around like a, a mice in a maze. Just going foolish because we are impatient. No does not mean never. No means no, but it doesn't mean never. When you study the scriptures, one of the things you will discover, and I think this is one of the, the awesome things about God. When you study the scriptures, you'll discover that God majored in doing things at the time when people thought it was too late. He majored. He majored in blessing people. He majored in performing miracles when the majority of the people, if not all, were convinced that it would never turn around. He shows us that no today does not mean never. Lazarus is sick. Word gets to Jesus. That Lazarus whom you love is sick. Jesus shows up. Lazarus is dead. And he's been dead for four days. The word and the atmosphere in the town when Jesus shows up is why are you coming now? It's too late. He's dead. He's been dead for four days. Sister said, by now he stinks. Jesus says, because he's dead. Because I didn't show up when you wanted me to. Because when you requested me to come, I said by my actions, no. You think it meant never. Show me where you laid it. You know the story. Right there in John chapter 11. Jesus walks to the tomb. He says, roll the stone away. And when they roll the stone away, he calls Lazarus forth. And Lazarus, come, Lazarus comes back to life. Because no does not mean never. And the Bible is salt and pepper. Calvary and the redemptive work, hallelujah, that Jesus Christ did for us. Look as if God was saying no. And that no looked like it was really being interpreted never. What do you mean, Bishop Clark? The Jews were expecting him to come and overthrow the Roman government. They were expecting him to come and establish the kingdom right there in his time. And he said to them, no, that's not what I've come to do. I didn't come to establish my kingdom in the way you think. He dies and on the third day gets back up from the grave and 40 days later he ascends up to heaven and he tells them, he says, listen, go and witness to others. Bring them into the kingdom that is coming. Isn't that what we pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Which means, watch this, that God will set up his kingdom. He said no then, but no does not mean never. And what God did in the sense of, of establishing his kingdom here on earth, now it's in the hearts of men. But he comes back to establish his kingdom on earth. And what he did with Lazarus, bringing Lazarus back from the grave, is what he desires to do with our finances. But we cannot be impatient. We cannot think that no means never. Just because I can't buy it this paycheck does not mean I can't get it next paycheck. Just because I can't buy Pookie the toy this Christmas does not mean I can't get it next Christmas. But just because it's not happening for me right now, the goodies and the creature comforts are not, I'm not able to afford them, afford them right now, 
does not mean I never will. Don't let the devil deceive you. Don't be caught up in this web of foolishness thinking that no means never. Don't be impatient. The prodigal son was impatient. He goes to a far country. He leaves the father's care. He leaves the father's uh, 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 supervision. He leaves the father's guidance because he is impatient. My brother, my sister, take a moment, stop. Oh, I'm serious about this. Stop. And ask yourself, is this something I have to have now? Or can I get this later? Am I of the mindset that no today means never? God's people have been too long without the resources we need to live the life that we desire to live, to live the life he has no problem with us living, using his resources that he's given us to be a blessing to the kingdom of God and expand his ministry. But yet, we can't do that because we've been impatient. I encourage you. I, I beseech you. Don't be impatient. Because when you are impatient like the prodigal son, you will find yourself wasting money. The Bible says he got his goods and he got out to the far country. Isn't it amazing that he had to leave the father's house to do whatever he wanted to do? In maturity, breathe in patience. And like in maturity that leads to waste, impatience leads to waste. Watch this now. In maturity leads to waste because it is a mindset. In maturity is a mindset that manifests itself in actions. Listen to me good. When I'm immature, it's, it's a reflection on my thinking that is manifested in my behavior. But when I am impatient, it speeds up that process. In other words, immaturity starts me down the road to waste. But impatient is me running down that road. In maturity, I'm on the road to wasting all of my resources. I'm walking. I'm immature. I'm wasting money. I'm walking. But when I become impatient, I start running then. And I get to waste quicker with my impatience. Don't be impatient. You can wait. You can wait. It's not going to kill you. Anything worth having is worth waiting for. Get your resources lined up. Get your credit together. Put everything. Listen, there's some things you have to pay. Bills and necessities of life. No, I'm not talking about that. But those other things, put pause on it. Wait. Wait to take the vacation. Wait. Wait to buy the new car. Wait to buy the new outfit. Wait. Wait on the wedding. I know I just made somebody mad then. Wait. Don't get impatient. If it's for you, it's going to happen. You don't have to get in the rush. I want to pray again. I want to pray again tonight because, you know, the overwhelming response I got from the last show, it, it just, I mean, I knew the Lord was telling me to share this with you, but I did not know, I couldn't fathom how many people needed to hear this thing about money. And I know it's a touchy subject, and you're used to the preacher telling you, this is how you ought to give money, you have to get, and I'm not, you know, doubting that because it takes money to do things, but I can't teach you how to give money and not teach you how to save money. Because you can't give what you don't have. And you'll never have it if you waste it. And you'll waste it if you're impatient. 
Let's pray. Father, in your name, I thank you so much again. I thank you, dear God, for my brother, my sister, who's listening to me now. And I pray that what I have said from my heart has touched theirs. And that they, Father God, would begin to be patient, to wait. Before they spend, before they use their resources, that they would really ponder. If this is something that I can get later, why should I demand it right now? And then if you say no, tell them, let them see that does not mean never. In the name of Jesus, I pray for them as well as myself that we would avoid the practice of being impatient. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Answers. May the Lord bless you and keep you. You have a great day. You deserve it. Hi, this is Dr. Clark and welcome to Answers. Listen, before we get into the show tonight, there are many of you all who have called and uh, contacted us by way of Facebook email asking us, you know, how is church service, when does church service start? So for those of you all who are interested in meeting me in the sanctuary and not just watching me on TV, here's a clip from one of our Sunday morning experiences. I pray it blesses you. Seasons food. I don't care how the food tastes. Once you put salt, it changes. Salt never comes in contact with food and the food remains the same. Salt never comes in contact with food. I don't care how garlicky, garlicky it is. I don't care how uh, uh, cheesy it is. If you put salt in it, salt's going to be the dominating influence. Some of you all have been in restaurants with people before they even taste the food. <laughs> Jesus says to his followers, he said, you're the salt of the earth. When salt does the food, you ought to do the people. So I came this morning, and for the next 15 minutes, it's 12, 10, I came this morning, and I just came to tell you how you can be and stay So, you're going to maintain your influence if you're going to convince people to do and do here problem sense you have to have the right attitude before people the right attitude the right attitude where do you get that from from that passage well when you study the context Jesus has just finished teaching his disciples about the attitude the be attitude or the attitudes to be. So he spends the first 12 verses teaching them of how they ought to behave and how they ought to present themselves. And then he says, you're the soul of the earth. Oh man, I'm teaching it here. He says, if you're going to maintain influence with people, you have to have the right attitude and the right actions before people. Can they? Everybody get down there. Get down there. Yeah, yeah. Today, how spiritually you can share that out of salt. Spiritually, 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 spiritually. Now, once again, I said something that crossed your mind when you saw me with that salt. Watch this. That's it. Watch this. I have to have the right attitude before people and the right action before people. In other words, when I am before people and I live among people, watch this. As a child of God, I have to let people see me respond, not react. Yes. I lose my influence when stuff happens in life and I don't respond, I react. So
tuned in to Life Television Network, your number one Christian station. This week on the Taking the Kingdom broadcast. Now, when is favor necessary? See, because some of y'all shouting and you don't even need favor. Because favor is necessary for, you know, certain things. Now, when is, when is favor necessary? Favor is necessary when you have a vision that requires the finger of God to manifest it. Now, let me ask you a question today. Do you have a vision in here? When is favor necessary? It's necessary when you have an assignment that exceeds your abilities. When is favor necessary? It is necessary when you face an enemy or problem that is beyond your stature. Some of y'all whining about the enemies in your life, but sometimes you have a lot of enemies because you have a lot of favor do. Enemies don't follow people who don't have favor on them. If you have enemies, it's a sign that you got favor. Prepare your hearts to experience a life-changing anointing. Prophet Robert C. Blake Sr. pastors a ministry that reaches out to those who are bound and ministers healing and deliverance. His dynamic ministry touches the lives of people throughout the nation and international continents. God has placed a sure word of prophecy in his mouth. Welcome to the Taking the Kingdom broadcast. Let's join the prophet. Thank God. Amen. And then I have my doctor, Dr. Robert Charles Blakes Jr. And all I need you to do is just pray a little bit, pray for him. I declare he's going to bless you this morning. Yeah, it's been a while since he's been here. And this morning, I want you to hear Dr. Blakes. You're going to bring it to the... Amen. Good to be home this morning. I push... Take your seats. I, I, I made a point to get home today. I, um, I just left East New Orleans, did our 7 o'clock service there, and I said, I got to go. I got to get, get uptown. I want, to, um, I want to bring your attention to the Word of God. Um, Say this with me, favor. Favor. Touch that person next to you, tell them, I got favor on me. Hmm. I'm just getting some things organized here. Touch that neighbor again, tell them, favor is on my life. You know, when you get, when you get favor on you, uh, anything is subject to happen. And uh, that's what I want to deal with today. <clears throat> I want to talk about living in the favor zone. You know, zone, when you start thinking about zones... Um, a zone is a specific or particular region or place, neighborhood, where something specific happens. Uh, it's a place where, where certain things go on and certain people reside. Um, even when you think about, you know, in New Orleans we love football. When you think about football, uh, there's such a thing as the red zone. 
And you love to see your team get down in the red zone because when they get in the red zone, it means that any moment the score can change. One play. You, you can be on the bottom this second and in one play, one move, you can be on top. You know, the last Super Bowl we had, we, we thought that uh, one team had it won. But then the other team messed around and got down in the zone. And in the last seconds of the game, they won the game because they had gotten into the zone. Well, there's a thing called the favor zone. And uh, the favor zone is, is a spiritual place where the child of God can step into and change his or her life forever. And that's what I come to tell you today. You, you may not realize that you may be looking at the circumstances surrounding you, but you, you are in the favor zone. Yeah, you're in the favor zone. I was sitting down with a young man, uh, when was it, Friday, Thursday in Houston. And he, I said, how are you doing? He said, Pastor, I'm having the best year of my life. He said, my business is up 26%. I said, you mean to tell me in economic times like this? He said, Pastor, I can't understand it. He said, but all I know, one thing is I, I'm enjoying it. Now, how in the world you get your business up 26% in an economic climate like this, touching even to the boy got favor on him? And in Psalm 102.13, he says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, type of the body of Christ, for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time is come. Touch your neighbor, tell them, my time has arrived. Now, now when you look at, when you look at, <laughs> y'all gonna make me jump off this stage? Yeah. I see why I was running up here. Hallelujah. When you look at the background of that text, the people of God were, you know, going through great struggles and the psalmist declares, even in the midst of these struggles, that the set time of favor had arrived. And uh, there are seasons in our lives when, when it looks like everything that can go wrong is going wrong. And, and it is in these seasons, when things are their darkest, that God stands up and God establishes a time in the life of a righteous man. To step into that individual's life and favor him in spite of circumstances or conditions. And see, this is why the Word of God encourages us to hold on through difficult times. You know, I don't care how rough it gets. Stop all this whining and crying and complaining and buckle your faith shoes up and, you know, clamp yourself down and hold on because... Whenever you have a struggle, you got to understand God has a time for you to come out of it. And when you come out of it, you will always come out like Job came out with twice as much as you. What the devil thought he took for it from you, he's going to have to return with interest. I'm preaching to somebody up in here. Galatians 6 9 says don't be weary and well doing for in due season you're going to reap if you faint not there's a set time so there's always a greater season of favor following every testing and every tribulation but you can miss it if you give up now, now what, is, what is favor in the Old Testament uh, it, 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 you know, a few meanings. One of the meanings of the word as it's used in the Old Testament is graciousness or, or subjective kindness. Uh, in other words, favor is God's kindness bestowed on one simply because God chooses that individual over another.
In other words, you know, it's God's prerogative. God can come up in here today and say, well, you know, I choose him, and I'm going to favor him. And he may say, well, why, why are you favoring him, and you're not favoring me? And God's response would be, it's my prerogative. I can do what I want to do. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Don't make me go back on you now. You know, it's when, it's when God gets, uh, he becomes biased regarding a, a particular child and God makes the game one-sided to the favor of that individual. Yeah, and look, look what the word says in Exodus 30 because we see, it, we see it clearly here how the favor of God just you know God just says I choose to favor you and nobody can do nothing about it in Exodus 3 20 through 22 listen to what God says to the children of Israel to Moses he says and I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders which I would do in the midst thereof and after that Pharaoh will let you go watch 21 and I will give this people these slaves favor in the sight of the Egyptians the slave masters and it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. You're not going to leave out broke. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house, Jews of silver and Jews of gold and raiment, and ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and you shall spoil the Egyptians. You're going to take their wealth out with you. So the word used for favor here means a biased or preferred kindness. God made the slave masters favor the slaves to the point that they gave them their wealth. Now another meaning of the word favor, it means to bend or stoop in kindness to an inferior. Favor is God, in other words, coming down and doing for us what we could never do for ourselves. Favor is divine intervention into human affairs. And sometimes men trying to explain, well, how did you, you know, they want you to write it on paper. Well, how did you do this? And what was the plan for that? And, you know, sometimes folks scratching their heads saying, well, I can't really give it to you because I don't know really how it happened. All I know is that, you know, I said I, I needed it. And, and next thing I know, I'm sitting in the middle of it. The reason you can't explain it is because God is the one that came down and what? Did it. Put on that neighbor's hand and tell him I'm waiting on God to come and do some things. In Psalm 75, in Psalm 75, 4 through 7, he says, I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly. And to the wicked, lift not up the horn don't get beside yourself lift not, lift not up your horn on high speak not with a stiff neck don't get arrogant and proud for promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south but God is the judge he put it down one and he sets up another now, now, so the message of, of the text basically states don't get beside yourself, don't get high-minded because ultimately God's going to do what he wants to do. He will promote and set up those he prefers. And, and the, the term promotion here uh, means to, to be high, to rise or to raise. Literally, it means to bring up, to heave up, uh, to, to lift up, to set up. And in other words, God takes and he, he lifts one, he throws one to where he desires him to be in life. See, when, when favor gets on your life, you got, to, you got to stay buckled in. It's like a roller coaster ride because in a sudden you can be jerked from the bottom to the top. Shake your neighbor's hand and tell them, stay buckled up now, stay buckled up. Now, when is favor necessary? See, because some of y'all shouting and you don't even need favor. Because favor is necessary for, you know, certain things. Now, when is, when is favor necessary? Favor is necessary when you have a vision that requires the finger of God to manifest it. Now, let me ask you a question today. Do you have a vision in here? When is favor necessary? It's necessary when you have an assignment 
that exceeds your abilities when is favor necessary it is necessary when you face an enemy a problem that is beyond your stature some of y'all whining about the enemies in your life but sometimes you have a lot of enemies because you have a lot of favor do enemies don't follow people who don't have favor on them if you have enemies it's a sign that you got favor so so a person needs favor primarily for these three things now to bring a vision to pass or fill an assignment overcoming an enemy in other words a person that is not doing anything not going anywhere has no need for favor Now, now the two necessary kinds of favor we need favor with God and we need favor with man and what happens is that many people many times miss their miss their full potential in life because they watch this disregard the favor of man some of you all in here today you know you have a poor attitude with people around your job you're the worst neighbor in the neighborhood. Well, let me let me bring it where you can reach it. Some of y'all got the, the, the worst attitude in the whole congregation this morning. You don't speak to nobody but bishop and first lady. And then you're wondering why certain things don't show up in your life. It's because God has designed a system that whatever he's going to send to you, he's going to get it to you through somebody. But when people don't like you, it's hard for them to release into your life. The Bible says of Jesus in Luke 2.52 And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature And in favor with God and man God uses men to transfer the blessing to you And when you have a personality that, that, that disrespects and ignores people You often cancel the transaction The transfer, the manifestation of God's blessing on your life God can move somebody this morning to do exactly what you need done. But if you have an attitude that turns people off, you're often working against the favor of God. Now how do we step into favor? Three things I want to share and I'm sitting down. I got 25 minutes. I don't plan on using all of that. Number one, how do you step into favor, Pastor? Number one, favor starts where wisdom is sought. If you want to step into favor, a season of great favor, develop a mind to pursue wisdom in your life. God's favor is such a benefit that it cannot be trusted in the hands of a fool. The greater your wisdom, the greater your capacity for favor. I was, I was talking to uh, one of my sons. He, he gifted very gifted, extremely gifted. And uh, I said, I've been talking to him for about the last six months. I said, when you, when you, are you going to school? When are you going to school? He's just bouncing around, doing nothing, working all these little odd jobs. And young man, no family, no children. Don't want to go to school. And so, you know, I asked him yesterday, I guess I said, now, are you, do you plan on, what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do? You just go, you plan on just riding around? Working all these little odd jobs, living like a little hobo, making a little few dollars here, a few, few dollars there. How are you going to increase yourself? 
I said, I'm asking you to go to school because when you go to school, son, it's going to expand your ability to learn and to grasp. And when God pours onto your life all that he wants to pour onto your life, it means that you will have a capacity to manage it. You ain't got nothing going on to hinder you and you won't get, you don't want an education, but you know some people just block minded. But if you want, if you want favor on your life, you got to first get wisdom. Now watch this, watch this. Even though I mentioned school, you got to understand, wisdom doesn't come by way of the blackboard. That's just a form of earthly wisdom. It's a start though. The Bible says if you want wisdom, you ought to pray for it. And if you pray for it, God will liberally give it to you. Watch this story. Two young, two young ladies both went into business. One graduated from an esteemed institution. She had an MBA. Another young lady didn't graduate, but she had a few, few semesters of college, but she felt like the Lord was leading her into business. The young lady with the MBA, she put all of her books out and had all of her, you know, know-how and all of her intellect there on the table, and she was putting it together like they taught in the classroom. The other young lady said, well, I ain't learned all that, so I can't pull all that out. But one thing I can do is I can go around this community and I can talk to people who've been in business for years. And I can learn from their experiences. And so she went around, she talked to all the older, you know, seasoned business people. And they sat her in the office and they talked to her for hours upon hours upon hours. So finally they both decided to open the, their businesses. They launched around the same time. The one with the MBA, three years later, she was still struggling and just about to break even. Three years later, the young lady who didn't have all of the education but went and sat down and learned from those who had done that and had been there, six months after opening her business, she had to expand. Because a business was booming just that much. When you seek wisdom, shake your neighbor's hand and tell them favor will follow. You know, when you look at, when you look at, when you look at King Solomon, God promised that he would favor Solomon like no other king because Solomon asked for wisdom first. And because he asked for wisdom, he stepped into the favor zone by recognizing wisdom in 2 Chronicles 1 and 10. Look what Solomon says. He says, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this, thy people, that is so great? And look what God says to him in verse 12. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee neither shall there any after thee have the like God says I'm gonna give you what you ask for and I'm gonna give you more beside it's because you asked for wisdom now you got favor somebody wave that right hand and say Lord give me wisdom today so favor starts with wisdom where wisdom is sought secondly favor comes with connection Favor comes with connection. To step into the favor zone, you must identify rather your God-ordained relationships. Because frankly, some of you in here today are hindering the flow of favor on your lives because of who you're hung out or who you're connected to. Some of you all have the wrong people in your life. You cannot be tied down to curse people and think you're going to walk in the blessing. Oh Lord, hallelujah. Help me preach this here this morning. That's the problem I have with young Christian women, you know. It's a strange thing how Christian women, your discernment works. As long as you know you're up in the house of God, your discernment works with the members in the church, your discernment works, your discernment work on the job, 
your discerner works with your family. But Lord, don't let a man that look halfway the way you want him to look and smell the way you want him to smell come up. All your discernment goes blind. This joker got two horns sticking out his head, a tail hanging out his back coat, and a pitchfork, and you can't see this is a devil. But his horns look so good, Reb. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know I'm preaching up in here. Shake your neighbor's hand and tell them you got to be connected to blessed people. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 20, He that walks with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. You are going to reap the fruit of the company you hang out with. And every wise person takes inventory of the state of his life, her life, after every connection you make. If your life goes in a downward direction after developing certain relationships, touch your neighbor, tell them that's a sign. You mean tell me after I connected with you, I can't pay my bills. I got all these past due notices. I'm stressed out. And that ain't happened to you showing up in my life. I don't care how much I might think I love you, you got to go. Robert C. Blake Senior Prayer Center. God's healing place for those who are ready to give up. Experience spirit-filled and anointed prayer partners as they minister biblical principles from God's Word. Call today. Prayer partners are available now. 504 Five six nine eight two zero five, or log on to www.prophetblakes.com to submit your prayer request. Remember, your breakthrough is a phone call away. Become a covenant partner with Prophet Robert C. Blake Sr. Tap into the prophetic anointing upon his life by sowing a monthly seed of $25 or more. All faithful partners will receive a monthly special moments message prepared by Prophet Blake's. Also enjoy your personalized frame photo of the Prophet interceding for his faithful partners in ministry. Thank you for your sowing into the Prophet's life through your love and faithful support. The vision is unfolding as God uses Prophet Blake's to minister healing and deliverance to the nations. Today's broadcast is available on CD or DVD. Order your copy today. Remember to ask about the Prophet's new catalog or log on to ProphetBlakes.com. Thank you for your love and support to the ministry. Thank you for tuning in to the Taking the Kingdom broadcast. Robert C. Blake Senior Ministries is supported by faithful covenant partners around the world. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Pritchard. Give your child the education they need at Word of Life Life Institute Christian School. We have a full-scale educational program serving grades K-1 through K-12. We utilize an acceleration Christian education curriculum that allows your child to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Openings are available, so call now at 251-456-2652. Life Institute Christian School, because our children are our future. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Bruton, Alabama. 
Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Many people in the natural were missing God because they never cultivated and developed their faith. Because when you review the scriptures, everybody that ever received from Jesus when he was in the earth realm, he would have a response. Be it unto you according to your faith. Go thy way, thy faith have made thee whole. So it's essential as a believer that I get around some good teaching. Because faith comes how? And hearing by what? So as I hear this word today, I should be obtaining faith for what I hear. Welcome to Power in the Word, the exciting teaching ministry of yours truly, Dr. Henry W. Roberts the second. I am the founder and pastor of the Word of Life Community Church, one church, multiple locations to serve you and your entire family. Right now, I want you to call a neighbor, call a friend, let them know that Power in the Word is on the air. And after this, I'm going to come back and let you know how you may obtain a copy of today's message. So until I should see you again on this air, God bless you and keep you. Get ready to be blessed. You got it? Amen. Well, I tell you to go. Psalm 6, 8, verse 17. All right, ready? Everybody read. This is what your Bible says. You brought it in here. I wasn't passing them out at the door. All right, ready? Read. 19. Go on down to 19. Skip all that for the second time. Run down to 19. Do what does God do every day? Wow. Come on back to Psalm 103, because I'm, I'm trying to show you. God don't want you suffering. God don't want you broke. God wants you to be able to pay the e-bill. Amen. 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 You got my scripture? We're back at 103. Let's go to verse 2 this time. Ready to read? Let's Keep reading. So number one thing God has benefited me with, he forgives me for everything I ever did wrong and everything I might do wrong in the future. He said, who forgives, what did he say? Son. All. all of my nigga. Keep reading. No, some of them. So how can the Bible say God heals all my diseases and then you listen to some preacher or somebody who's been in church talking about God put the disease on you to teach you something? He just lied on God. Now, just because it ain't happening in my life don't mean God ain't still doing it. See, many people, yeah, I'm going to say it just like that, Holy Ghost. Many people in the natural were missing God because they never cultivated and developed their faith. Because when you review the scriptures, everybody that ever received from Jesus when he was in the earth realm, he would have a response. Be it unto you according to your faith. Go thy way, thy faith have made thee whole. So it's essential as a believer that I get around some good teaching. Because faith comes how? And hearing by what? So as I hear this word today, I should be obtaining faith for what I hear. First of all, the, the Bible mentions money, the word money, M-O-N-E-Y, right. over 123 times. Yeah. So they let you know money ain't something God's scared to talk about. We might not want to talk about it, but God has no problem 
discussing money. See, somebody still stuck back there when I told you the kingdom of heaven was where God lived and the kingdom of God was how God does what he does. Mark chapter 4 real quick. Man, I'm almost out of time. I think I won't like the 26th verse. Then we're going to have to go to Revelations. I think it's around the 20th or the 21st chapter. Y'all got me Mark 4, 26. Talking about the kingdom of God right now. God's kingdom. That's God's. Say that. Say the kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. Y'all let it? 26. All right, ready to read verse 26. Ready to read. He said, so is the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of heaven. So is the kingdom of God. Read. As if a man should cast seed. He said the kingdom of God operate as if a man should cast seed. Keep reading. Yes. For fruit. Keep reading. Uh huh. I call that the law of progression. You can't do nothing before it's time. Notice it's a first, then, and an after. That's right. That's the kingdom of God. Real quick. You just mark it for your notes because I'm running out of time. I need you to go to Revelation now. Show you the kingdom of heaven. Show you the kingdom of heaven. There's a difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Heaven is where God lives. The kingdom of God is how he operates. See, that's good, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost just trying to talk about Moses. Moses in Israel. The Bible said Moses knew God's ways. But Israel knew his acts. Moses knew God's ways, acts, ways, but Israel knew his acts. In other words, bring it in to you. Moses knew how to get God to move. Israel only seen the manifestations of Moses' prayer life. They saw the acts of God. Red sea pardon, flies, blood, frogs, huh? Death angel. Those were the acts, but it was something went on that caused the acts. Moses understood the ways of God. Tell you who else understood? Oh, David. Bible said David was a man after God's own heart. David go out there and do something real scandalous and know how to get right back in God's face, get that blood applied to his life, get that forgiveness, get right on back in that way he's supposed to be. Even when they wanted to kill David, God said, you better not touch him. He is the apple of my eye. Where I tell you to go? Revelation 21 10. Let's go there. Come on. We'll show you heaven. Just a couple of verses. You got your own Bible. Write it down. You go back and study it later on. All right. Ready? Read. Listen. Descending what? Descending from where? Descending from where? Keep reading. Keep reading. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. Keep reading. All the city had twelve foundations, and in the land of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Keep reading. Jesus. Yes. Huh. That just shows you how balanced God is. See what I'm saying? The length, the breadth, the height, everything is equal. Four sides, God is a balanced God. Amen. 
Two is the number of covenant and establishment, but four means security, balance. It's just as tall as it is wide, just as deep as it is high. Keep reading. Wow, now, now I got to give you that one because I can't just let you run past He said according to the measure of man unto an angel, next to an angel. See, when the angels came to Sodom and Gomorrah, they took on human form. So that means they, they digressed from their celestial form. So when he say according to the, uh, the measure of man, man, an angel is huge. It's, it's, it's two of them go with me everywhere I go. I got one for prosperity and one for protection. Yeah, you, you got some too. I just call mine out. You can't see them, but they walk. When I walk, they walk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, if you, I'm going to give you a quick reference. Remember uh, uh, when, when they were walking around the city? Walking around the wall. And then remember man drew his sword and he looked up and he saw the angel. And he, no, look, he looked up at the angel. The angel had the whole road blocked. That's how big they are. So in compared to a man, and I'm a pretty tall man, I ain't tall as some men, but I'm about six two and a half. He, he used to be six three, I'm shrinking because I'm getting older. But watch. He he he's way up out of this room. So he wants us to get a visualization on how huge our protection is. Yeah. Top flight security data. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, come on read. Come on read. I'm running out of time. My God. Jasper, all these precious stones. Now see, that's why I got to get you to get rid of a broke mentality because you can't go to heaven with no broke mentality. Say it with me. Heaven is a very rich place. One more time. Heaven is a very rich place. See, you don't be around people that ain't used to nothing. Y'all have them come to the family reunion. Everybody want to take plates off. We got enough food here for you to eat. They got food at home, at home in the refrigerator, but we still told plates and boxes, boxes of food. So God got to change our mind. That's why I say, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind before he could bring us into the presence of greatness. Flow, the, the floors, and I got to go from here. I got to go from here. But the floors are not paved with gold. The Bible says they are Pure gold. Pure just keep reading that section. We're going to get out of here for right now. The walls are jasper, just like that color this you're looking at right now, almost like a purple stone. Then he told you the foundation had 12 layers of every precious stone. 12 gates. The Bible says that sitting in your lap, each one of these 12 gates were made from one pearl. I want to see the archer that spit that bad boy out. <laughs> Say it with me again. Heaven yeah. is a very rich place. See, that's why. That's good Holy Ghost. That's why it said in the Bible, he became poor yeah. that we might be rich. Yeah. See, in his day and time, you know, they ain't even hardly have brick streets everywhere. So he left gold streets to come walk on dirt. Yeah. Yeah. He left a palace that when he looks out over his alcove, he sees many mansions to come down here to mud shacks, tents. See, look, everybody say, look, somebody say, everything in the Bible is relative. See, so in other words, the relative part, he left a rich place to come to a place of poverty. Yeah. And when he brought, left there, he brought all that, the richness of that anointing and left it in the earth for him. Yeah. And they called it glory. Because <laughs> the Greek word and the Hebrew translates for glory mean heavily weighted with substance. Amen. Come on, say it again. Heaven is a very rich place. So that means I'm going to be there for eternity. Jesus. 
I got to change how I think down here. Give me John 10.10. 10. I got one minute on the clock. I'm going to close. Where I tell y'all to go? Come on, quit all that playing. John 10.10. 10. Ready? Read. Read that again. The thief come of night before to steal, to kill, and destroy. More abundantly. More is already more. Then abundance means more than more than enough. Then you got people with a mentality that had a nerve to say, you got enough. You don't need nothing else. How many times you done told somebody, oh, they got enough. You trying to talk me out the will of God. If Jesus came, that I might have life, and that life, more than more than more than enough, and you try to tell me, I got enough. You are trying to talk me out of the will of God. Psalms. Last one, y'all. Please stop. I think it's 111. Make sure I'm hearing this right. And I'm, I, I'm closing after this. You can pull all you want. One twelve. Yeah, no, that's not the one I'm looking for. Go, go to one fifteen. Start at verse eleven, and I'll tell you when to stop reading. Hold on, wait on everybody. Everybody got what? Say go. Psalms. Start at. Let's say it real proper, commencing at verse 11. All right, ready? Read. Stop. Why do you think you're in here this morning? Because you fear the Lord. That means you reverence him. You came to worship and to serve him. So he's talking about us right now. Keep reading. Jesus, keep reading. God got Henry on his mind. You might not have me on your mind, but God has me on his mind. The Lord have been mindful. He, a, a matter of fact, I'm going to say it like his mind is full of me, DJ. I'm going to get real selfish with it because you know you can forfeit your blessing. People get property, houses, cars, money because folk forfeit it. Then somebody go in there and collect it. So all you don't want, I'm taking today. Keep reading. He will bless us. He's going to bless the whole house of Israel. He's going he to bless your pastor, whether y'all like it or not. And bless my children if they line up with the word of God. Keep reading. That fear the Lord. Keep reading. Both small, I can't get left out. So if you're already rich, guess what? God got a plan for me too. And if you already got something, he's going to give you some more. Keep reading. The Lord going to do what? Decrease you? No, he's going to take away from you. Well, why are you trying to tell me I got more than enough? See, I got to keep gathering until I have enough I can pay the church off. If your child needs to...
Wow, wasn't that word good? You can obtain a copy of today's message by simply calling or writing us or even emailing us at the information that will be located on the screen. Word of Life is a need-meeting church with several opportunities to serve you and your entire family. We have activities for children, youth, teens, adults. I mean, we, we try to touch the total man. We got a gym you can work out in. We got a soup kitchen that's open every Thursday. I'm telling you, there's not a place where you can't serve. So if you're looking for a place to serve, learn, and grow, then consider the Word of Life Community Church. And until next time, on the same station at the same time, remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God, and you'll be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to Power in the Word. To order a copy of today's message, simply write to Power in the Word, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama, 36611. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Bruton, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible Study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Here's the ways that you can stay connected to the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network. You can go to the following websites, www.powerintheword.org or www.wordoflifetv.org. You can also view us on Ustream by going to www.ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash life television. You can also view us on the Roku channel by clicking on the channel store going to the category titled new and clicking on life television network you can also tune into life radio network by going to the website www.tunein.com going to the search bar typing in life radio network and there you will find our station for those of you who are in chickasaw or the surrounding areas you can tune in to us on 87.9 fm you can also stay connected to us by way of social media by going to YouTube, typing in the search bar, Word of Life TV Network. You can also like us on Facebook by going to the search bar and typing in Life TV. You can also follow Dr. Roberts on Twitter by going to www.twitter.com forward slash HWROB2. We here at the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network thank you for your continued support. Hello friend, I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent so to speak, but we're interdependent. And that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you. And I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter. And in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers. But most of the time, we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place, call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God told you it could be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons and we needed to be, be, have a place that we could convene around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens is iron. So there's the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, God bless you and keep you 
is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries, or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. Now it's a time when we can all participate in this. This gives you a great opportunity. You've been blessed by this broadcast. You may be sitting behind that television screen, internet, or on your screen of your computer saying, what must I do to be saved? I am so glad you asked. It's very simple. Jesus said, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Call upon me and I will answer you. You know what? He's sitting there waiting for you to call. All you got to do is pray this prayer for me. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you. That your word declares that if I would confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that I would be saved. Now, God, I renounce the hidden works of the darkness, and I ask Jesus to come into my heart, come into my life, and save me, redeem me. I thank you, God, for my sins being forgiven, and I thank you for coming into my life and saving me. I believe I receive my salvation right now. Wow, it's just that simple. Listen, I want to put a powerful tool in your hand. It's free. If you pray this prayer with me or you're just watching the broadcast and you desire to know more about your salvation, I have a little book I wrote some time ago called What is Salvation? I want to put a copy of this book in your hand. It can be read in one easy setting. You can share it after you get through with it, leave it in a bathroom or share it with your friends or your family members. But it talks about what salvation is, what salvation isn't, and how you can obtain salvation and maintain your, your new walk with Christ. I want to welcome you to the family of God and thank you for tuning in each and every week or however you may watch this broadcast. And I thank you for your support, your prayers, and your seed. God bless you. And keep remembering that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, you be blessed. To receive your copy of the book, What is Salvation? Simply write to Word of Life Community Church, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama. And remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You be blessed. Be sure to check your local listings for the days and times that you can view the Power in the Word broadcast. Life Community Church is here to serve you with one church in four locations. In Pritchard, Alabama, located at 1682 South Atmore Avenue, on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. In Chickasaw, Alabama, located at 351 South Craft Highway, on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. And in East Bruton, Alabama, located at 111 Florida Street, on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. And in Pascagoula, Mississippi, located at 3705 Burden Avenue on Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. For more information, log on to our website at www.powerintheword.org. This has been another edition of Power in the Word. On behalf of Dr. Henry and Sherry Roberts and the entire Word of Life Community Church family, we say God bless. Tune in next week to another edition of Power in the Word. And remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, God bless. We need to stick to it. And I know uh, most of the time we don't want to hear messages like that because that means we got to make some changes in our life. But one thing I know about to get to a next level and to live victorious, it must be some changes made. Somebody say, I got to make some changes. Don't be looking for who ain't here. God is talking to me and you. He said, it's time for the believers to stick to it.
to it. This is a generation that don't stick to nothing. I mean, this generation is so, they wear their sleeves, they fill it on their sleeve, and if you say something out of order, they take their ball and their bat and they go home. But I'm here to tell you, God is ready to raise up some disciples. He's ready to raise up warriors. He's ready to raise up victorious people. I didn't come for about five or six of you. I know some of you still think it's a show time, but this ain't Apollo. This is God's time, and God is ready to use me and you. Somebody say, use me, Lord. Hit your name, Max, and say, what do you stick to? And who do you stick to? I'm not going to be able to go over the whole message. That's why we're going to give you a bonus package. Two CDs for $5. Part one and part two. And it's called Stick To It. And any believer that got good sanctified common sense need that CD. Need them in your car. Need them in your home. Need them so we can get developed in our spirit, man. Because the enemy is after us to quit. He love a quitting believer. He love a believer talk one talk in the presence of a great cloud of witnesses and then go home and can't even walk out what you talked about. I know it, I know it. He loved that we are strong. We put on the strong faith when we got a whole lot of people around us. But what happened when you're by yourself and I'm by myself? Do you still say, devil, get back? I'm going to win. I got the victory. You ain't going to have my family you can't have my marriage you can't have my finance it's more than a song it's called a believer stick to itness one thing i thank god for my mama that's in this great house and my dad if he was here they taught me how to stick to it see most people think you just wake up one morning and you're gonna stick to it not if you've been around a whole quitting a whole people don't do nothing but quit they're going to show you how to quit. They're going to show you how to throw the towel in. They're going to show you to say, I'm out of here. I don't want to fool with that. That's a coward way. Will the real church rise up in power? Will the real church begin to say, devil, you are lying. Jesus is the Messiah. No weapon formed against me. My family shall prosper. And I'm going to stick to it. See, it sound like you're mad with somebody. I am. I'm mad with the enemy because I see what he do to the believer. He have you throw your marriage away. Then he have you throw your cheering away. Then he have you to throw your education away. Then he have you. And then we go around and get before people and say, everything is, oh, I'm just blessed of the Lord. How you blessed and you done gave away your family? Somebody says, stick to it with your quitting self. I tell pastor, I hate to see a weak man. A weak man make me want to go over and slap them. If anybody ought to stand up, it's a man of God. Telling me to pray. What about you to pray? Daniel was a man when he prayed. He prayed three times a day. Come on now. Somebody say, quit quitting. Go with me. I want to pick up right where we left off with Esther. Somebody say, quit all that quitting. Come on, stick to it. Power is in seeds. Do you hear me? You got to get anointing from somebody that got one that knows how to stick to it. Running around your old crazy friend, and then she ain't stuck to the marriage, she ain't stuck to her education, she ain't stuck to her job, and you talking about anoint me. You need to get back around somebody that got a real anointing that been proven by God. Not only did my mama teach me and my daddy, Jesus taught me how to stick to it. Every little thing didn't trip him up. Every trap they set, it never caused him to end his destiny. He said when he got ready, it was finished. Other than that, he said, oh, you become my enemy? Come on, see, Jesus talked a good talk and walked it. When are we going to start talking it and walking it? Oh, don't let the mic, don't, don't mess up. That's, I heard the enemy try to come in and make the song.
circuit break. Somebody say it won't work. Well, go with me to Ruth. I told you I can't, I, I, I can't take you back to all the lamentations that we said we was going to stick with God. And then we said in 1 Corinthians we was addicted to the ministry. Some of us need to stick to ministry. In and out. You've been in every ministry in the church. Honey, can I tell you a secret? It ain't people. Everybody in those ministries is not messing with you. Is you don't have no stick to itness. And you don't have no people skills. See, my ba baby boy, he used to tell me all the time, Mom, I can't work with so and so. I said, Well, you ain't a kingdom worker. Because, see, when you're a kingdom worker, you can work with Godzilla if God put you there. Because I got stick to it and the power from God. See, that's what's wrong. We want to work with people with the same personality and all that little foolishness. But if you're going to grow, you got to get with somebody that's going to rub you the wrong way. But you can go home and pray and say, God, give me strength to deal with this. Ain't nothing wrong with, ain't nothing wrong with the church. It is a quitter. And a quitter never wins. Is that true? Somebody say it out loud. I can't quit no more. Come on, you, you got to say it because everybody knows what's wrong with you. They just ain't had the balls to tell you. They didn't have the guts to tell you. But since God sent me and gave me the microphone, he said I could be as bold as a lion and said, tell the truth in love that the people will grow up. That's why we haven't grown up. Well, nobody tell us the truth. Scared we're going to take our anointing and our gifts and go play in another man's field. Go play. Are you at Ruth 1? Ruth and Naomi. Whew. It's been preached so many ways, but when God showed me this, he said, Come on now, Ruth, stay with Naomi. In her roughest time, woman ain't had nothing. She had lost everything, her husband, lost her children. And then she went from Moaz, which means wash pot. Ain't too much going on there. But then Ruth said, let's go up to Bethlehem, Judah. Well, that means the house of bread. Let me pick this up with you because you're looking at me like I owe you something. But I just come to tell you... Number one thing to stick to in this will cause somebody to take notice of you. Don't you miss that? I told you Ruth 1. I just paraphrased Ruth 1. Let's go to Ruth 2. Stick to in this will cause someone, somebody said, to take notice of me. One of the translations that King James said, it would take knowledge of me. But the Amplified said to take notice, notice of me. Somebody be looking at me because they saw last year when they came to the church. And then the year before I came, they came to the church. And the year before then they came to the church. And they said, is that the same woman that I saw that was still in this ministry? I want to take notice of her because I want her to come sing in my comfort. I see she got some stick to it in it. Is that the same preacher that I saw that was serving? I want to give him an invitation to come do a workshop at my... Ruth 2 and 10. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, why have I found grace? She's talking to Boaz. Why have I found grace in thy eyes that thou shouldest take notice of me? And seeing I am a stranger. Now let me pray. Seeing I am a stranger. Is that it? But listen to this. Boaz had a field full of fine workers. But Ruth got there. They was all trying to get to Boaz because they already know he was a rich man. But here come Ruth on the 
seen working and he looks up. But you know why she got that kind of favor? Because she stuck to Naomi. See, favor will follow you from one relationship to another one. So when she got there, Boaz forgot about all them other girls. He started acting, who is that dancer? <laughs> oh, he, I, I believe he started sweating like a man do when they see a pretty woman. <sighs> How can I get next to her? And then the Bible said he took notes. Now you know, just one glance at a stranger means that God had orchestrated this favor for her. So somebody say, my stick to itness would get me notice. Oh, come on, give God a hand to pray. You, you might not believe it right now. I remember one time I was sticking to an assignment at a conference. And the other people had been there longer than me. Lisa was with me that time, but they had been there. You know, we was the new kid on the block. But because we had the power to stick to it. Now, they supposed to have been working a conference, and they was over there just playing and eating and talking and whatever, and we over there working like a bull for somebody else's conference. And all of a sudden, I said, Pastor Lisa, God got his eye on us. He was taking notice of us. Soon as we got through, God begins to open up doors for us because God loves a person that got a mind to stick to it. See, when we don't stick to things, it makes the kingdom look bad. People be like, what happened to... Didn't she say she was there with you till God called her home? And then they gone. Don't get bored because I want to tell you this other thing. Look at Ruth 2 and 12. Somebody says stick to itness will get me noticed. I, I don't believe you believe that. Ruth 2 and 12. Not only will sticking to what God done assigned us to do get us noticed, but it will bring us in a full reward. I'm going to book it right here. Ruth 2 and 12. And the Lord recompense. This is Boaz still talking to Ruth. He said, the Lord going to repay you, girl. For thy work and a full reward will be given of thee, of Israel under whose wing thou hast come to trust. Somebody say, payday is coming. Now, this is what Boaz did. He started looking around. He said, everybody been hearing about you, Ruth. How you took care of your mother-in-law when she didn't have nothing. And now you going to work and leaving your mother-in-law at home? Because Ruth told Naomi, don't you do nothing. I got this. But because she stuck with Naomi, listen to this. She was even instructed how to get the rich man. Who can you stick with that give you instructions that you will follow to get your rich man? Who will you stick to to give you instructions that you get a breakthrough in your marriage? Who will you stick to? See, I, 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 I know this ain't going to relate to you because this generation has went back to the 60s. It's my thing. You can't tell me who to sock it to. They don't want to hear the wisdom of the wise men and women that have stuck to things, got the victory of a thing, got the manifestation of the thing, got the... I'm just going to do it my way. Okay, keep on doing it your way. But I found out when I find somebody got wisdom, they can accelerate my way. Don't you miss that? They can accelerate my way. When it took them 10 years, it'll take me three years to get the manifestation. Somebody says stick to it. <laughs> okay, go with me right down a little further to Ruth. I ain't got but three little points to hit. I 
I said that you and I, once we stick to something, it's going to bring us in what? Y'all didn't even get it? A recompense and a full reward. Wait, let me go back. Recompense, number one, is going to bring you into what? Thank you, baby. Somebody's listening. Because if you shout it out, holler it out, and don't get impartation, you'll never see the manifestation of what's being preached. I told you this wasn't entertainment. This is a classroom setting for how you're learning. Number one, if I stick to something, somebody going to soon notice me. <laughs> My work and labor is not in vain, sugar, sugar. And yours either. So number one, smart class, what stick to it and it's going to get me? Somebody going to notice me. And then the young ladies and young men, that's why you got to put your best face forward every time. Don't let them notice you and you ain't been kept. Number two, what it's going to do, it's going to give me a recompense of reward. I mean, it's payback time. I've been laboring, and you've 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 been laboring, and the devil is talking about, it's your hardest time. No, you need to tell him, it's my hardest time. See, he's been talking head, Lisa. I know he's been talking to me, but I can see clearly now the rain is gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can see in the scripture how Ruth labored with Naomi so long till the girl did finally get into her harvest. It was a hard time for them, but God done brought them into their harvest time. And he used the man Boaz, which means kinsman's redeemer. Boaz was a type of Christ, honey. You can read Boaz all you want, but every time I look, I see Christ redeeming me. I see Christ noticing me. I see Christ going to give me a full reward. Somebody say, keep laboring. Come on, give God a hand to pray. It ain't your hardest time. Come on, say it. It ain't my hardest time. You looking hard, but it ain't hard. It is your harvest time. It is manifestation time. It is preparation time. It is the manifestation of what you and I have been praying about. And if somebody, some prophet don't come, we'll still think we're in our hardest time. Somebody say, I'm moving. Go with me one more. I got one more stick to it. And it's root 2 and 16. God, this is good to me and you and the Holy Ghost. Because one thing about it is we can't just run through scriptures and not see what God is saying. Are you at root 2 and 16? Now this what, that, that I'm telling you, Boaz, that's where I was going, Pastor Derek. You're going to help me preach it. Thank you. Okay. You know, I don't mind a little assistant because God gets the glory. All I want to do is tell the story about and for we can get some manifestation in our lives. But look at this. I love how Boaz, which is what? A type of Christ. Boaz is the kinsman redeemer. The type of Christ. He, Christ, this was Boaz said, girl, I'm going to get you noticed if you stick to it. Type of Christ said, you know what? I'm going to recompense you and get you a payday. You're going to get a full reward. See, 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 you can't rush this. This filet mignon here, honey. It got to get in our spirit, man. This is not where you go get some pigs in a blanket and throw in your mouth and then you need a pickle and then you need an olive. That's called ap appetizer. Nobody wants an appetizer as long as you've been working for God. I know I don't. I need a filet mignon. I need a full meal. I need a recompense. I need him to reward me and I need my payback. Somebody say, I got to have my payback. I've been through too much not to get paid back. And I didn't stop and I didn't start. And some of you.
you done stopped and started. God said, that's all right. Just get back on track. See, I love about God, he don't penalize us. I love how pastors say, he, may, he ain't going to put us, he going to put us not in the back of the line, but he going to put us back in line. Oh, you ought to hear this good news here. This here is ready for TBN, and you ain't even ready for it. This kind of preaching here will bring people to the fullness of the Godhead. It'll help conform them into the image of his dear son. Because Jesus stuck to it. Jesus stuck to it. And if Jesus did it, I can do it. One business that fails, so what? Pick up another one. Stick to it. One marriage that went up under the water. I can't help that nut did not know your self-worth. Go get another one. I ain't gonna stop, I ain't gonna stop. Somebody say it with me. I ain't gonna stop, I ain't gonna stop. Hey, 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 I ain't gonna stop, I ain't gonna stop. Hey, I ain't gonna stop, I ain't gonna stop. Somebody's trying to convince you to stop. I ain't gonna stop, I ain't gonna stop. Come on, come on, come on. I ain't gonna stop, I ain't gonna stop. You know, shame would try to get you to stop. Somebody knew something on you. I ain't gonna stop, I ain't gonna stop. Your last house got repossessed. Jesus' name. 
there's room for you here at Christ Center Church. Join us on Sunday mornings for discipleship training class at 9 o'clock a.m., followed by Miracles Corporate Prayer at 10 o'clock and a morning worship experience like none other at 10.30 a.m. And then come in for a midweek refueling on Wednesdays with Miracles Corporate Prayer at 6.30 p.m., followed by Empowering Disciples Bible Study at 7 o'clock p.m. Pastor and Apostle Ashley would love to see you here at Christ Center Church, 6808 Jefferson Page Road in Shreveport. Another life-changing message from Apostle Brenda Ashley. For more information, find us on the web at www.christcenterchurch.org. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. Here are the ways that you can view Life Television Network. You can now view Life Television Network on the new WGOX TV 43 by simply going to your local retail store, purchasing an antenna, and connecting it to your TV monitor. Life Television Network now has its own app. You can install the app by simply going to the App Store in your mobile device and typing in Life Television Network in the search bar. The app is also available in the iTunes Store for those with an iPhone. You can also view us on the Roku Streaming Player by going to the Channel Store and searching for Life Television Network in the Religious category. And you can also view us on our website at www.wordoflifetv.org. You can also stream Life Television Network live on YouTube by simply searching for Word of Life TV Network in the search bar. Apple TV, Google TV, and Smart TV are other ways that you can view live television. Simply go to your app store on your Google device, your Apple device, or any smart device and install iPoint Global, and there you will find Life Television Network. You can also listen to Life Radio Network by going to TuneIn.com and searching for Life Radio Network. And there you will find our station. You can also tune in to Life Radio Network on our website, which is www.wordoflifetv.org, and click on the page radio. For those of you who are in Chickasaw or the surrounding areas, you can also tune in to Life Radio Network by simply going to 87.9 FM. We here at Life Television Network and Life Radio Network thank you for your continued support. Hello, friend. I am Dr. Henry W. Robinson II, and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent, so to speak, but we're interdependent. And that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you. And I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter. And in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers. But most of the time, we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place to call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instruction and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God told you it could be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons and we needed to be, be, have a place that we could beat around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. So does the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf 
of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. This is a national health alert from the 24-7 Diabetic Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one has diabetes, listen closely. Now, regardless of your age, if you have insurance, you may qualify to receive diabetic testing supplies with little to no out-of-pocket cost. Get free delivery, free information, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers for free. Call the 24-7 Diabetic Health Hotline now for details. Toll free at this number. But wait, there's more. If you call right now, you could get a free meter. Well, praise the Lord. Brother Charlie, we're here ready to go. Yes, we are. Yeah. Ready to break the bread of life Amen. with you. Yes, we That's are. That's what we're doing. This is breaking the bread, the bread of life. Amen. I tell you, Brother Charlie, God is doing some wonderful things. Yes, He is. Yeah. He's a great you, things. Yeah, He's a miracle working God. Yeah, and and He's here to work a miracle for you. Amen. And your telephone number's on the screen. Yeah. Don't cost you nothing to call. You need to get on there and call if you have something you want from God or something you need from God. You notice I said want from God. That's right. Or need. That's Brother right. Charlie. And me and Brother Charlie will take it to the throne room of God. Yeah. We'll agree with you. Yes, Jesus we will. Jesus said in Matthew the 18th chapter, the 19th verse, if any two will agree as touching anything, anything. on earth that they'll ask our Father in heaven, it shall be done. It shall be. Unto them. Shall be. Yeah. And so we'll agree with you, and us two and you makes three. Amen. That's more than two. Yeah. That's greater numbers, ain't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. The Bible said one put a thousand flight, two put two, ten thousand. Ten thousand. Wow. How many can three? Yeah, I can't <laughs> count that high, Charlie. <laughs> That's the trouble. <laughs> but I know it'll work. I know it'll work. You see, we've tried it. Yeah. Week after week. That's right. That's right. We believe it. Yeah. We believe it, and it works. You see, listen, God has extended to us wonderful grace. Amen. You know why? Wonderful. He has a wonderful plan for That's our right. life. Yeah. And Amen. all we got to do is believe him, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. That's all we got to do. It don't cost nothing to believe him. That's right. Believe God. Thank him for it. That's the way I show him I believe him. When I ask him for something... The next time I think about it, I thank him for it. I do too. Yeah, right. that's that's what we do yeah. because that lets him know that you're expecting it. Yeah. See, and that you know this and that he heard you. Yes. Yeah, that he heard you. Amen. See, in Third John, he said, uh, uh, "If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us." That's right. And if he hears us, we know we have the petitions that we ask of him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we yeah. have those petitions we ask of him. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Now, a lot of people <coughs> say, oh, Charlie, they'll say that's too hard. That's God. That's too hard. Listen, he told me uh, a week or so ago, maybe two weeks, he said, tell my children, ask me for a hard thing. Yeah. He knew what they're thinking. I remember that. Yeah, ask me for a hard thing. Yeah. And then just thank me for it. Amen. Listen, how long do I thank him for it? Till you get it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Till you get it. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Till you get it. Listen, it ain't you ain't wasting your valuable time or his. He wants to bless you. Yes, he does. He said, "Listen, I w want to give my children good gifts. Good gifts. Yeah. Something they really like. Yeah. You know. Listen, beloved, he said, I desire above everything. Yeah. That you prosper." And be in hell. Be in hell. Even as your soul prospers. Yes. Covered it all. Amen. Covered it all. That's like we were talking Sunday about the Lord's Prayer. Listen, 
that prayer, the disciples noticed. They, they seen Jesus praying, and they seen that he was raising the dead, healing the sick, casting yeah. out devils. And one day they said to him, they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Yeah. They seen his prayer was effective. That's right. Teach us how to pray. He said, all right. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Listen, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread. Yes. And deliver us from evil. Yes. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you something. That prayer covers every aspect of our lives. Yes, it does. Every aspect. You think that Jesus would have given them a prayer that wouldn't have helped them? Huh? No, no way. I was I was telling my class about a lady. She was she had gotten uh, old and and uh, a little sickly, and she was knew she was dying. And a lady we know went to visit a friend of hers went to visit her at the hospital, and she said she was she went in she was repeating the Lord's prayer. Over and over and over and over. Yeah. And a little nurse said she'd been saying that all day. <laughs> she'd been saying it all day. Same thing. Over and over. And listen. In a little bit, she slipped off into eternity saying that prayer. Yeah. What a way to go. Yeah. Slipped <laughs> off into eternity saying that little prayer. Yeah. The Lord's Prayer. We yeah. call it the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. But it was our prayer. Yeah. Our prayer. Yeah. Listen, I'm telling you that we're coming into a time, Charlie, of signs, miracles, and wonders. Yeah. I'm telling you. I was talking to the Lord about that tonight. Amen. He said when his last general, when I take my last general off the field, he said what they talked about was two, and that was one of Old Roberts and Billy Graham just left. Mm -hmm. That was the last great general of God. Yeah. Now, you say, well, that wasn't the last great preacher. No, there's great preachers out there. But he said, when this happens, there's going to be a last revival. Yeah. The last revival. Yeah. And he said, it's going to start. He told Dr. Cho, and I told you this. Yeah. And the East, East Coast. Yeah. In Virginia. Yeah. A great revival, Charlie, yeah. that's going to sweep this world. Yeah. Azusa Street was started by a black man yeah. out there. And they came from all over the world. That's right. To to receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. They did. Yeah. They went to Azusa Street, yeah. California. Listen. This last revival, now listen, there's not gonna be no more great generals. This revival, Charlie, is gonna be <coughs> preached and taught by the sons and daughters of God. Yeah. Like you and me. That's right. Yeah. That's like right. you. Yeah. Listen, the church is going to get the last revival.